So are you ready for Mr. Beanie? <laughs> I actually love this pattern so much. I've been doing it for years and it's so very simple and it's perfect for giving gifts. So I thought it would be nice to have now in this season when everybody's making gifts. And what I really like about it is you see this, um, the, the texture that it gives with the half double crochets. It sort of lo looks like knitting and I'm not saying that knitting is better than crochet, but <laughs> in this case, I really, I really just love the texture on it. It looks really proper. And when you add the, the fake fur pom poms, I mean, it's just a, a beautiful gift, isn't it? So uh, this one comes in two sizes, the small one, the kitty size, which fits like two to four or five years old approximately and then no it comes in three sizes actually it's the kitty size and then there's the medium size which is actually like what both me and my 10 year old son use <laughs> so it's really uh so that's like grown up from 10 years and up and then there's the large which is the same length 22 centimeters long but a bit wider but really after you've done this one time this beanie one time it's so incredibly silly easy that's hence the name mr beanie <laughs> Um, so once you've done it one, one time, uh, it's so easy to just make it any size you want. And for example, I have one here that I did for me too, uh, which is made with like extra bulky yarn. So then I just kind of used this one for comparison and just made it sort of the same size and then used less, uh, less rows. But it, this one's really thick and nice, will be good this winter. But here you really can see the stitch definition. Don't you just love this, this, um, this um, texture that the, I'm going to show you how to do the half double crochets uh, to get this texture. And also because it's half double crochets, then it's quite quick to work up. And like mine take, literally I've timed it now <laughs> and they take like three hours from chaining up to finishing. And I don't even block these or anything. They're just beautiful as is. So what you'll need me chatting along is a couple of um, 50 gram uh, skeins of iron weight yarn and you don't even actually use both skeins I'm thinking that with three skeins you probably get two hats but I'm not sure I haven't tried it but uh, you don't use all of it so if you have some leftovers you don't need the whole two of them and if you're in Iceland by any chance this is what I'm using Kat, uh, merino tweed from Katja and I used these for these here too, I really like this tweet um, look of it. Uh, you can get these in Fundra, in Kobor, you guys, if in Iceland. But I'm sure you can get Katya online. And again, chances are, I mean, it's so little that you need. So chances are you have something in your stash that you can use. Any iron type yarn will do. And you will need a 4.5 millimeter hook, some stitch markers, do, 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 do. a faux fur pom-pom. I like these that come with a sort of uh, pre-made, oh, I have no idea how to say this in English, like a clippity clap thing. <laughs> oh, great enough. So it comes with this thing here that you, you fasten this one on the beanie and then, then you just click it on. So you sew that part on. So like, for example, here, you can take it off for washing, which is obviously very handy. And if you don't have this type, then you can do it, um, then you can sew a button on the inside of the beanie and fasten your pom pom onto the button so that then that way you can take it off if you want to wash it because obviously washing that isn't really nice. You don't really need the, the, the pom pom. That's just like an extra nice touch, I think, when I'm doing it for gifts. You can also make your own pom pom. And last but not least, we of course need our cup of coffee. <laughs> Cheers. So let's get to it. I'm going to show you how to make this very easy Mr. Beanie. Okay, so let's get to it. We'll start by chaining up and I like to leave a long tail so that I can use that bit to sew up the, the top of the beanie. So I leave like 25 centimeters, that's like 10 inches. And we start by making our slip knot and then we're going to chain up 42 stitches and I'm doing the medium size beanie but it's the same chain up for the large size so because we're chaining up the length of the the beanie so two four Just 
42 so chain up 42 stitches and then the stitches that we're going to be using in the beanie i'll show you all of them but um we're going to be using slip stitch single crochet and half double crochet okay so row one and now we are starting actually because when we're working the beanie we're always working it up and down in rows yeah so now we're going to be starting down here at the ripping and working our way up to the top okay row one it is and we're gonna skip the first chain that was just to turn really and we start by working one single crochet into the second loop from the hook and then six more single crochets four, five, and six. So now we have seven single crochet stitches here. Next up are 27 half double crochets. Half double crochets go like this. You yarn over and you insert the, the hook into the next stitch. Pull your yarn up like so. So then you have three loops up on your hook and then you yarn over and pull that all the way through the three of them. Yeah, yarn over into the next one, pull your yarn up so you have three loops on your hook and go through all of them. And we're going to do 27 half double crochet stitches. I really do like half double crochet stitches because they're so much faster than the single crochet, but they give a sort of um, denser, uh, more dense fabric than the, it's all curling up, it looks like a caracol, how do you say this, a snail. <laughs> uh, it gives a much denser fabric than the, the um, double crochet stitch, obviously. And since this is a beanie and we live in Iceland, I do not want the wind to blow through it. <laughs> okay, so I've done my 27 half double crochet stitches here and then at the end of the row we're going to do seven again seven single crochet stitches two three four five six and seven and then we do one chain here at the end and turn so that was row one. And actually, yeah, I remember now because I have my stitch markers here. After row one, it can be handy, especially when you're doing it for the first time, to place stitch markers into your first and last uh, half double crochets. This is my last one here. Just to remember where to start those. But I see it rather easily by now, but then you just count one, two, four, six, seven, and put it here into the, it's better to have it in the loop actually, into the first half double crochet, and I don't know that one, put it properly here, and into the last half double crochet. Okay, so that was row one, all done, super easy. <laughs> On to row two, and now, and in all the even number rows, then we're working from the top of the beanie and down to the ribbing. So from the top and down to the ribbing here. And now we turn our work, and we're going to skip the chain that we did there. That was just for turning, the turning chain. And we start by doing seven single crochets into the front loop only so that's the the front loop here you see there are two loops in each stitch and we're just going to go into the front loop now so seven single crochets and 
seven, and now we get to our stitch marker, so we know we're supposed to change over to the half double crochet. And here's the little trick on how to get this special texture. So the good thing about the anatomy, <laughs> anatomy, I don't know how to say this in English, um, of the half double crochet is that, you see, it has its normal two loops here, and then it has one extra here in the back. And when working from the wrong side, always on the, in the, the even number rows, like two, four, six, etc. Then we're going to be working into these extra stitches here. So it's the front stitch, but it's not the normal front stitch that you would go into, like this one here. It's, remember to yarn over, it's this one here. You see? So you can just look, where was it? Do, 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 and follow it here into the back. So now, when working from the wrong side, then we're always working our half double crochets into those. You see? And it's sort of like, if you look at it here, it's sort of like you're going into, e um, not into each one, but like in every two. Because this is not the loop, it's this one here. But if you turn it like this, then you can always, you can follow it sort of. Oops, I'm not showing this very well here. Okay, just, so here is the loop from the front, and you follow it, and it's this one here. And I am so happy to be able to show you this in a video, because I was trying to take some pics of it, for the pattern and it's not so easy because <laughs> you can never get the whole three of them together on a pick. They do not want to be photographed together. <laughs> so always from the back side then we're working our half double crochets into this secret back stitch of the half double crochets and again we're doing 27 half double crochets. It's always in each row it's 27 half double crochets in the middle bit of the of the row okay so it's not this one it's this one you see i mean it's not this one it's this one it's sort of like going into at the beginning maybe it might be a bit bit i don't know difficult to see but i've done this so many times so i don't think so but i hope i'm showing this very clearly and you can see it lines up with the other one yeah Just continue with our half double crochets until we get to the other stitch marker. Okay, two more. Should count them just to be sure. Yep, and now if you look from the front side, then you can see the lovely effect this gives because it leaves this, the two uh, loops from the front of the half double crochet completely intact. So it really gives this lovely braided look. Okay, so that was the 27 half double crochets. And now when we're working from the back side, then the last seven, all the even number rows, then the last seven stitches of the row are, are single crochets again, but now we're going to work those into the back loop because we're doing the ripping. And when you do ripping with single crochets, then you always work it into the back loop. Doesn't matter if you're going um, to the from the front or the back. So I'm just going to count here to be sure: two, four, two, four, six, and seven. So this is the first one here. Always from the into the back loop. Then when you're finishing off the even number rows and now we're doing the ribbing at the bottom of our beanie. And finish it with one chain just to turn. So this is our row number two, all done. On to row number three. And so in row number three, and always in the odd number rows, then we're working from the front of the piece, and we're working from the ribbing and up to the top. Okay, so we start again. 
and this row, the, all the odd number rows are all in through the back loop. Okay, so now we start and we do skip the chain, that's just the turning chain, and we do seven single crochets into the back loop only. Seven, and then we're going to do again 27 half double crochets and also into the back loop and the back loop now is much clearer so now it's just this normal back loop here because now we have this this is what we were working into before but now we're working into just a normal back loop here of the half double crochet well this one is better defined sort of it's a, yeah so 27 half double crochets and as you can see what i'm doing is because we're working it sideways then what i'm doing is doing the increasing so that the ripping is single crochets because we want that to be um tighter and then the bit here is half double crochets which is a bigger stitch longer stitch and so that it gets a bit uh, wider. It really is a joy to stitch this. It's so easy and nice and just completely TV friendly. <laughs> And of course, always just move up your stitch marker to see where you are. But actually, what I rather do is I just count and see that I have seven left. But here you see, this is the last half double crochet here. It's where our stitch marker is. And I'm going to count to be sure two, four, six, and seven stitches left. And now to finish it off here, now we're at the top of the beanie. And now we're going to do four single crochets into the back loop. All this row is into the back loop. One, two, three four and then three uh, slip stitches and take care to not do the slip stitches too tightly so it's easier to crochet into them and the slip stitch is just pulling it up here and straight through the one that you have up on the hook and always as always with the slip stitch you want to give them just a bit of extra slack because otherwise they are just nasty to work into one two three and then one single no, one chain to finish the turning chain and as you can see, what we're doing here is this is the ripping at the beginning, so that's a bit tighter because you want the ripping to be like nice and tight. And then this is the sort of main part of the beanie, and there you want it to be wider. And then I'm just doing the decrease here so that it gets tighter on the top, yeah? So we're working ripping the middle part and then to get it to be like taken together here but then obviously we have to sew it together here so this is really all there is it's only these um these rows that i have to show you and then you what you do is that you just repeat rows two and three and for the medium size which i'm going to show you here you do a total of 46 rows and for the larger size uh, in the adult one you do 50 rows and again you can control this i mean you can just see if it fits or what but this is the the predetermined sizes. So I'm gonna go continue and uh, work on all my 46 rows and then I'll show you how to, you do the same. <laughs> and then I'm gonna show you how to finish it up and sew it together and uh, finish the, put the pom-pom on, yeah. Okay, so now I have done rows four to 44. Because the total row count for the medium size is 46 rows. So just in case uh, everything wasn't clear with row, what I showed you in rows 2 and 3, which is the repeat, then um, I wanted to show you just one more time how you do the repeat. And also before we get there, so this is how it looks, yeah? So you're just working like one piece like this and then you put it together like so. It's super easy. And so this is also why it's so easy to control the the size, you know, because this is just the length and you can really 
do it like here. I always do these. What is it? Um, Twenty-seven, whatever. As uh, half double, half double crochets, and then there's the ribbing here in the beginning. That's seven stitches, and then there's the decrease here on the top, which is seven stitches as well. But it's super easy to change these these um, and make it longer, whatever. But whatever. And in the pattern, you have the small size as well. And there, obviously, it's just fewer stitches here and fewer rows as well. Yeah. But it's really easy to um, to control the size. I'm just going to show you. So for the medium, it's supposed the 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 adult sizes or that are like teenager to adult should be around 22 centimeters long, as you can see here. That fits, and that's what yeah nine inches. And then I was actually just <laughs> and then it's supposed to be. Uh, what, uh, 44 centimeters wide for the medium, 48 for the large. And I was just uh, actually doing this and it seems like this uh, this one I did a bit tighter. So you can stretch it a bit because it is stretchy. But even if I stretch it, it's only like 41, but I still have two rows to go. So when you, when you do uh, measure it here, you can stretch it out a bit because it's always going to stretch. And, it, and this, this kind of, um, um, what you call stitch gives a good stretch that's why it's nice as uh, for a bean because it's like tight but then it stretches nicely so when you do the the measurements you do take care to like stretch it out a bit and then you see here i have now 41 42 centimeters and i still have two rows to go so that fits for the 40 44 and 44 centimeters in inches is 17 cent uh, 17 inches más o menos Okay, so I'm just going to show you now the last two rows and how to uh, then do the finishing. And obviously, if you have it all under control, then you just um, continue and skip over this here. But just in case, I just wanted to show you uh, how to do these two rows. That is the whole repeat of the pattern so let's go a bit like this okay so here i'm finishing row 44 and i did one chain there it had just gotten undone and you turn and in all odd number rows then you're always working up from the ripping and up to the top and this one the odd number rows are all in the back loop only so we start with seven Single crochet stitches into the back loop. That's the, the ribbing. And seven. And I actually have to check my pattern. How many <laughs> half double crochet I'm supposed to be doing? I was just doing. Yeah, it's 27. Yeah. I just do the ones that are there. <laughs> and that's also in the back loop, remember? So you leave this here too and you work into the back loop. So it's 27 half double crochets into the back loop. You know, every time I start making this, I always just want to make a ton. <laughs> As you can see, this is my fourth now in like a binge. Binge crocheting Mr. Beanies. It's just so comfy to do over the telly or whatever. It's always nice to give a warm gift, isn't it? Something that's warm and nice. That's that's just perfect. Okay, as you can see, I am not even counting my stitches. <laughs> and I'm not moving my stitch markers up. But since I'm doing so, I just every now and then I will count and see if I'm doing it right, if I'm missing one stitch or I have one extra, it's easy enough to just skip one or add one. I mean, it's not. You always have to make one little mistake in every handmade item, right? Just out of respect for the for the gods, you know? So that's fine. <laughs> and also to show people that it's not just store-bought stuff. You know, it's handmade. This is the real stuff. Okay, so I just do half double crochets. I now have the right amount until I get here to the top and then I will count two, four, six and seven. And then I know that I'm supposed to start to do the increase and in row 45, as in all odd number rows from from um, three and onwards, then we do one, two, 
three and four single crochet stitches and then always in the back loop and then we do three slip stitches and always take care to give those a bit of a bit of a, a slack and then you do one chain and turn and now we're on to the last row number 46 and now we're going to work into the front loop all the way until we get to the ripping on the bottom so this is the last row here for the medium size if you're doing the large then you continue and you make a 50 total and so now it's a bit tricky to get into those single crochet stitches so i will use my my hook here like this and we do seven single crochet stitches all into the front loop only like so three four five six and seven and now you see here we're up to the half double crochet so now we have these extra stitches here to work into remember we're leaving those two here and we're going into the ones in the back you can see them really clearly here one two three four yeah and again, we do 27 half double crochet stitches all into the front loop and really into the extra loop that the half double crochet stitch gives us. The stitch just keeps on giving. <laughs> kind of feels like magic that it has this extra, extra loop to it. I really like half double crochets. Is it weird to have like favorite stitches? <laughs> It's the little things in life. You know, I'm not going to be like pro lockdown or anything, but at least we have enough time in our houses to sit around and crochet. <laughs> you know, there's always a silver lining. I'm usually just at home crocheting anyway. I work from home and don't leave the house that much, so it's not affecting me too badly, to be honest. I'm a, how do you say this in English, like a home, homey, homey person? I just like to stay in and have my cup of coffee and my crochet. Okay, and it's really like once you've done all these rows, then you see just here is the last half double crochet because you can see there's a stitch here for me and there's none here. See, so I mean, it really leads you on, but do count every now and then so that you're not like decreasing or, or increasing too much. And now remember for the ripping at the end of all our even number rows, then we're going into the back loop. So now here you have to remember, we're always going to the front loop in this when we're working from the wrong side, but for the ripping, it's always into the back loop. So here we switch over to the back loop and do seven single crochet stitches. There you go, and that's our piece just finished then. We just have to do the, the finishing touching of sewing it together. Okay, so on we go to the finishing. Um, there are only two ends here to weave in, so I will start with those. newbie so when we're doing our ends we just want to hide them and do it securely so it's quite fine to just go a few stitches ahead like so and then take care that it's not like crumpling it together and then i like to do like one step back and the second this way I feel it's quite secure like if this one gets undone then the other one is there to catch it and then cut it just with a bit of a tail and then you tuck at it like this and the tail disappears so this is another very great thing about this beanie is that it's so few ends that you have to weave in it's just those two and then the two use to sew it together. Okay. 
Let's take care to hold on to it here so it's not getting tucked all together. And again, like this. Great. Snippity snap. There we go. And then now we're going to, I'm going to sew it together actually, but some of my testers liked better to do it with slip stitching. You can do slip stitching as well. I just uh, feel that I can control it better with the sewing needle. So now before we cut our yarn here, just leave a bit of a tail, like I don't know, maybe 30 centimeters or something, a bit longer than the, the hat itself. And just pull your thread through it like this once. Okay, and now we're going to sew it together from the wrong side. And again, if you prefer doing slip stitches for that, this with your hook, then no, that's just fine. And uh, now you should pin those together. It's good to use the stitch marker that you already have, and maybe just um, you know count seven stitches here. From the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you know that these two are supposed to go together. And then I do the same at the top. You can add one more in the middle, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fudger. One, two. Seven. What's this one here? And then on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we know it should line up like this. Yeah. So again, from the wrong side, we're going to sew it together from the wrong side. And when we do that, we're going to do it in a specific way so that you can hardly see it from the right side. First take actually this one here and just take it through this one. It's not really a stitch, it's just like the beginning here. So I want to from this side. Yeah. And now we're going to sew it together, just the whip stitch through one here and one here and into the, uh, well, there's only just one loop here really. To, now we go into the first loop here. So, oh, into the second loop, sorry. I was into the back loop. Okay, and just whip it together. So this was one there. And into the back loop of the other bait, the other side. And, you know, you don't want to do this too tightly. And that is why I prefer doing it with the needle. Although, of course, you can just take care not to do it tightly also with a slip stitch, but I just feel like, I don't know, I'm used to doing it like this. Just whip stitching it together like this and not put, pulling at it like really tight, just a moderate amount of a tug. <laughs> okay, is this lining up? Yes, everything is lining up. You see here? Our number number sixes like so and this is the seventh and then I can take this out um, like so let me check from this side to see if it's nice yep everything looking good <coughs> sorry about that okay now we get to our half double crochets those were the single crochets of the ribbing here and then we just continue to go into this here which is sort of our chain stitch here from the beginning and we're going to go into again continue to go into the back loop so we're leaving this loop here the front loop on the the front side to keep the what you call it um the texture consistent it works here all the time. <laughs> okay. And if we kind of, yeah, okay. It's because I 
have a camera here in the middle and then I'm not, it's not my, my natural posture, posture to do this, but we'll just power through. And as you can see, this is easy peasy. Hope you're seeing it clear enough. We do one here that's very close. So into this one and into this one. Okay. I'm leaving this bit here in the front. And just going into each and every stitch. And then before we get to our other stitch marker, like a few stitches before that, we can do a head count to see if my stitches are lining. And then you will know the truth if I was, if I was lying before I didn't count my stitches. <laughs> you should though. <laughs> do as I do as I tell, not as I not as I do. <laughs> if you do not count your stitches, that's at your own peril. <laughs> I've done this so many times, and it's easy enough to fudge. You know? No biggie. And it's obviously better to have a darning needle with a, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's not spiky. This is not like stingy. So that, that way you're going into the actual loops and not splitting them. Okay, time for the head count. Oh my, will it not fit? Let's see. <laughs> so it's one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on this side. There you see. But this is just an opportunity for me to show you how to fudge. I mean, I meant to do it like this all along, obviously. <laughs> so I have one extra stitch here on this side on purpose. <laughs> so what I do then is I just go back into the same one I did the last one and into the next one of the other one. I mean... I did this on purpose, but if you did it, how do you say, sin kered, without, um, not planned, then it's easy enough to fix. And again, we don't want it to be absolutely perfect either, so that people can see that this is handmade with love. Machines don't know how to fudge, we know. This is thrilling TV stuff, isn't it? Me sewing together 40 something stitches. <laughs> Start my own, own, own channel. Well, this is on a channel. Thanks for subscribing, by the way. <laughs> Especially since this is what you're getting me sewing in real time. <laughs> Okay, up to my stitch marker. I know that it fits from here. And I continue now the same way here and always into the back loop of the other one. Okay. There we go. When you get to the last one, and we're going to do another one into the same, like this, and do a little knot. Okay. And you see now, the reason that I left a long tail in the beginning is to use this one to sew the top together because after having sewed all up the, the, the side here, then it's all kind of, it's not very nice. It's, it's lost its twist. But obviously, if you're doing the slip stitches, then you don't really need to leave a long tail. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and weave in my end here. Way. So that's done with. Only four ends to we win. That's some kind of a prize in itself. There we go. And cut. Okay. Let's see how it looks from the outside before we 
continue. Yes, this is the, where is it? I can't even see it, it's so good, you guys. <laughs> the perfect join. Now you can see it a bit, but it's, uh, it's quite good, you see? goes in nicely with the other ones it's a bit more it's a bit uh, deeper but i mean it looks lovely like this yeah and then actually i do the sewing together of the of the uh, ba -ba -ba of the top of the hat from the outside because i want to be better able to control that a bit and so then we have this long tail from the beginning and we're going to use that one And what I like to do actually is I like to thread my yarn into each sort of ribbing, like into each, like one, two. Oh, I forgot to show you. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I was going to show you how to count the rows earlier. But yeah, it's so easy to count the rows on the ribbing on the bottom. It's like two, four, six, eight. Ah, well, you'll have to figure out how to do the counting on your own for that one then. So yeah, so what we do here, it's, you see that the, they have like, sort of like, a knob. <laughs> you see? This one here. I like to just thread my yarn into all of those. And then we're going to be pulling it together here on the top. But you see, it does, we, because we did already do some increase here by doing the the single crochets and the slip stitches here. So you see, it's already it's already done some increasing. No, increasing is the other word. Decreasing. So just go into each and every knob. I somehow feel like that's like a, a dirty word. It's a dirty word. Ah, uh, it's getting a bit late. You can either go into the smaller one here, but I kind of like going into the bigger ones because then you have like more space for it to get pulled together. You see this one here? Just into each and every one. Threading the top. The whole way around. Obviously, if you find some other way that you like to do this, I mean, this is just the way I do it. It's just closing up the top and you can really just do it any way you like. But I obviously just show you what method I use. Okay, now we're getting to our finish line here. And you want to go into the, you know, you, know, you don't want to slip, split the yarn, you want to go into the loops. Okay, this is our starting point here. So I just have one more to go and now I'm just going to pull it together. Like this, you see. Whoop, like magic. Right, here we go. Okay. Just pull it tight so that there is almost no hole here on the top, like so. And now I'm going to go and do the rest of it from the wrong side. So once you've pulled it tightly like this, then just Stick your needle through, okay, and turn it on the wrong side out, like so. Okay, and we're gonna pull, pull, pull because we don't want any any hole here, obviously, like so, and then we just do a couple of stitches too secure it and and you know close it up nicely and you know the 
this is not, as you can see, any exact science here. But I mean, who's going to be looking at the inside of the top anyway? Well, for your aunts or grannies who do that, then, you know, take care. But still, I mean, you can really just... You just want it to be secure and no hole, obviously. Okay, this is all tightly closed by now, as you can see. And then to the last bit, which is attaching our pom-pom. So just go back out again, like so. And turn it to the right side. So now you see, we have it all securely closed and nice here. Yeah. And then we take our pom-pom. And if you have the clickety-clack thing, like I do, take that off. And do take care, once I, I put it on like the wrong way, it's, you have to like put it on obviously so that the part that clicks on is out like this. And we're just going to place that here smack, right smack in the middle, like so. I think I actually have to change my needle now because I need a smaller one. Okay, so find the middle, place the clip clap thing there, and just secure this. What is this middle not going through here? What's happening? Yep. And just secure it like it's like fastening fastening a button, obviously. I'm assuming if you're all adults, you know how to put on a button, but still, I'm just gonna finish this whole thing here so you can see how easy and nice it all is. And I'm saying easy and nice, and yep, yeah, that was I hit the hole here. There, I think I'm burning the dinner that I have in the oven at this moment. Get the, the gist. I'm gonna take out the, the meatballs. <laughs> okay, meatballs shaped. And I just did a couple of more stitches here. So just to secure our little clip clap thing. And obviously uh, woven the end on the inside. And then it's the fun part. Oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> and you just attach the. Ah, did you hear that? That's the sound of satisfaction on a job well done. Do you see? Isn't it nice? Oh, now I have a set for the boys. This one's for Ulvud and this one's for Pepe. Eee. So really, this is such a fun and easy project, you guys. And I hope that you like, uh, you're going to have and uh, have a go at it and try it out now for, for Christmas. This is really a perfect Christmas present in the pattern, which I'll release on Gravelry. Now, uh, you have the small size as well, but really, I mean, it's so easy to decide on the on the sizes. So, you know, you can just do the video and, and figure the rest out on your own. But this is the small size and this is the medium size. And then there was one huge one I made for myself. So you can use all kinds of yarn, but the pattern calls for iron weights and you only need two balls, two skeins. And actually I thought there was more left, but it's just this one left of the second skein. So maybe, f yeah. So for the big ones, you need almost whole of, the whole of two skeins, yeah? But yeah, isn't it nice? And it's so proper when you put on the, fa the faux fur um, pom-poms because then it really looks like, you know, you want that store-bought look, but then the to know that it's um, homemade with love. Ah, uh, yay! So if you do make these and maybe share some pics on social media, please do hashtag it uh, Mr. Beanie so that I can see your pics. Okay, yay! How do you like the new beanies? Amazing! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs>